Hello, I'm Rita Candle, the Chair of Laboratory Medicine and Pathobiology, or LMP as we like to be known. I am so delighted to share with you the new strategic plan for our department. This plan helps us articulate our vision for LMP, who we are, what is important to us, and where we see ourselves going. What lies at the heart of this plan is you. This is a plan conceived by you, the people of LMP, and has as its goal to enable you to be your best. During the creation of this draft plan, we decided that the best way to predict the future is to play a role in making it. This plan will help us do this. It serves as a guide as to how we can enhance our educational activities, advance knowledge, and make contributions to help others. We can only move ahead and improve healthcare by working together in an inclusive environment which gives all of us an opportunity to achieve excellence. This plan is our guide for the next five years. There is something in it for everyone in LMP, the learners, researchers, clinicians, and staff. It focuses on five strategic pillars within which are corresponding objectives. Now we need to bring it to life together. To do this, task force will be formed composed of LMP staff, learners and faculty for each objective to enable progress and make things happen. These task forces may be brief or may be longer depending on the nature of the project. The success of this plan will depend on all of us and I am asking you to please contribute by joining a task force. Should you need more information, please contact one of the leads. Otherwise, sign up so you can make a difference in LMP. A diverse department leads to an understanding of healthcare issues from many different perspectives. A department that gives everyone opportunities to be their best must be a welcoming one. We want to strengthen our outreach and recruitment of learners, those working in the clinical laboratory, and scientists from wider and diverse communities. To do this, one of our first projects would be to understand the current composition of our department. Then, we will develop a plan to attract learners, faculty and staff who are underrepresented. We will work with high schools, student associations in LMP, as well as with our faculty to accomplish this. We also want to advocate for more equity in our community and expand funding and opportunities for underrepresented groups. Wellness is at the heart of developing sustainable initiatives and practices that allow us to bring our best selves to work every day. Wellness itself is very much an institutional responsibility and resources are needed to nurture our students, our staff and our faculty. We plan to do the following. We will allocate more funds to wellness activities across all of LMP. We will work with the clinical chiefs to enable wellness initiatives at the hospital sites and expand professional development funds for staff to include wellness activities. We'll continue to fund the annual resident and postdoctoral trainee wellness retreat and seek funding for our graduate and undergraduate student unions so they can arrange more wellness activities for their members. There are also many resources available in Tamidi Medicine and the University, so we'll facilitate more access to these resources across the LMP community and we'll also enable our faculty to role model wellness to trainees and colleagues by ensuring they have the educational resources they need to do so. For example, understanding the principles of wellness-centered leadership. To do all of this, we agreed to form the Vice Chair of Wellness, Inclusion, Diversity and Equity, which we have already done. So Dr. Isabel Aubert and I share this role, which is fully committed to embedding our principles of wellness and inclusion in everything we do across LMP. One of the greatest strengths of our department is our combined community of clinicians and basic scientists. We study disease, impact health, and we have people working in areas from basic mechanisms, diagnostics, and areas such as clinical chemistry, which is my area of focus. In this pillar, we're seeking to enhance collaborations, connections, and communications between basic scientists and clinicians across programs, disciplines, and within the university. We'll do this by seeking ways in which the faculty and learners can more easily find like-minded people. We plan to provide more networking opportunities and look at ways 
we can establish more cross-disciplinary initiatives. We're actually already active in this area by identifying and enabling cross-university opportunities for partnerships to fill clinical and knowledge gaps. For example, we have an ongoing partnership with computer science on AI. We want to develop more of such collaborations. It's also working and looking outside our university walls and fostering collaborations with groups such as industry. We have seen great success also with our quality council program, which actually brings various hospitals and reference labs across the greater Toronto together. This program has helped to advance the field of clinical laboratory medicine by bringing people together and harmonizing practices across the hospitals. We now want to emulate that success in other areas. In forensic medicine, we have a role to play to help grow capacity in other countries. We have seen success in countries like Jamaica and Zambia. Now we want to take our knowledge of science and healthcare and our ability to help educate to build capacity in other countries in other areas of laboratory medicine. This is a strong motivation for the people of LMP. We want to help communities and improve healthcare for all and we want to do that internationally. We'll do this by learning from our successes and applying that global outreach in other domains. We will grow our networks into indigenous communities and we will support investigations into the impact of war and climate change on health. People in LMP do a huge amount of this great work already, but it happens quietly in the background. We want to increase the profile of this work so we can inspire others. This pillar is about giving our people the tools and support they need to ensure the incredible research they do can happen, is more efficient and has more potential for impact. This starts with our faculty. Without them, there are no research learning opportunities for students and trainees. We want to enable our faculty to build strong research programs at all stages of their careers. We're going to work with Temerty Medicine to advocate and simplify the red tape around research between hospital sites and the universities as well as optimizing access and usage of core facilities across the university and affiliated research institutes. The Health Data Nexus and TCARM will provide data sharing opportunities between clinicians and basic scientists and wider communities which we will leverage. We will collectively work on identifying data sets to add to the Health Data Nexus. Our faculty recruitment will focus on bringing in new people to LMP who have a desire to lead interdisciplinary research to foster more connections. We'll also continue to advocate for more protected research time for clinical faculty and the support they need to do that. Our faculty are under many increasing pressures, whether it be achieving funding or trying to find time to do their academic activities. For junior faculty, there's a steep learning curve in learning how to balance priorities and to do excellent clinical work, research and teaching. Part of what can help lessen the stresses and strains is to learn from each other and pass on knowledge and experience as well as supporting each other. We want to foster a community of faculty to create opportunities for shared learning and mentorship. A key part of this is our faculty mentorship program, which we will be expanding. We also will have a faculty development day to bring the community together. This is an opportunity for cross-disciplinary faculty members to gather, network, share ideas and knowledge, and support each other to be our best. In LMP, we are at a unique interface where we can take clinical questions and investigate them at the bench. Our discoveries are translated into diagnostics and treatments for patients or to advance and challenge current knowledge. We have strong expertise in precision medicine, but we want to enhance that by integrating advanced imaging, omics and big data. We'll do this by creating departmental areas of focus in emerging technologies, for example, advancing point of care diagnostics and phage treatments. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we've seen how vital areas of laboratory medicine are, such as microbiology. To get ahead of the next pandemic, we'll invest in these areas through targeted faculty recruitment in collaboration with initiatives like the Emerging Pandemic and Infectious Consortium at the University of Toronto. Artificial intelligence is part of our future. AI will not replace the important human role in clinical diagnostics, research and education, but it has huge potential to make us better at what we do. But this is not the only profound technological change we're experiencing in our fields. The continued pace of digital technology and advanced imaging opens many opportunities. We are already involved in many of these areas, but we can't be complacent. 
we must consciously invest in continuing to develop these advancing technologies. We'll do this by identifying new and emerging research involving approaches that could be disruptive in the future and identifying innovative ways of applying existing knowledge or techniques. We'll use our AI center TCARA to translate AI into clinical contexts while also helping to refine algorithms so that they are more inclusive from the EDI lens. We're also looking to further develop digital pathology by revamping our digital media library and its use in education, incorporating more AI into the field, as well as increasing the use of digital pathology in clinical training. Our educational programs are constantly modifying, so our learners at undergraduate, graduate, and postgraduate levels receive an agile education that equips them for the constantly evolving environment they will work in. Our programs need to be able to quickly respond to rapidly changing advances in the biomedical sciences. To do this, our curriculum committees will continue to review our programs to ensure students will be exposed to a core stream of emerging essentials and to create new opportunities for personalized and experiential learning. The world we live in is diverse. In LMP, we always strive for excellence and recognize that it comes from people of all backgrounds, life experiences and abilities. Having a diverse set of minds and voices is essential to achieving our vision of helping societies get healthier by advancing the understanding, diagnosis and treatment of diseases. It is essential that we attract diverse learners. We will be reviewing all our recruitment practices with an equity, diversity and inclusion lens. We will also apply this lens to our curriculum. Not every person is the same. They don't learn the same way, nor want the exact same thing out of their program. To ensure our learners get the most out of their time in LMP, we want to foster individualized pathways that allow for a personalized learning approach. This means there's flexibility to learn more about the things they want to, rather than a one-size-fit-all approach. We're also encouraging more education scholarship in our faculty to foster the development of innovative teaching models for virtual and in-person learning. To do this, we're developing educational technology programs, starting with our graduate programs and exploring innovative teaching models for virtual, hybrid, and in-person learning. We'll be creating more educational opportunities by expanding our continuing professional development program and looking at expanding the offerings of modules and certificate programs. We'll also make funding for educational programs outside the university more accessible to more students. It's estimated that 70 to 80% of the clinical decisions for patient care are based on data that are obtained from the diagnostic laboratory. That's why basic and clinical research in our field of laboratory medicine are great enablers to improve these diagnostics. Interestingly, many people are unaware of the importance and the impact that the lab plays in patient care. It's not even included as a part of the core training for many medical schools. We want to change this. We want to change this because we believe that doctors and those who are working in healthcare and healthcare research should have an awareness of this very vital area of medical care and understanding of the disease. To do this, we will embed the basics of laboratory medicine knowledge into the broader medical and health science educational courses here at the Temerity Faculty of Medicine. We will do this by inserting our faculty into the University of Toronto Medical School Education. We will also be creating a new position of an associate chair in undergraduate medical education here at the Department of Laboratory Medicine. Finally, we will develop opportunity to educate the wider community about the importance and the vital role that laboratory medicine plays in patient care and healthcare.